Oh. You're okay. good. I'm good, but I'm good. Well, as long as they get her. <laughs> oh, no. No, you want to go? No, there oh, we go. Live. I'm cut off. Okay, guys. We're live. I know, isn't it? We're live. Hey, she crazy. No, okay, so um, I know I posted earlier that I was going to do a Facebook Live here in D.C. with uh, at, um, at the Hope Summit. And I was supposed to do it earlier, but I lost Terry. This is Terry Campbell. I lost her. She wanted to do it. So I lost her, so we ended up eating, and then we had a welcome reception, and so we took a little break, because, I mean, it's a wonderful event, but we took a little break, and so I told her, come on, let's get away from the reception and do this Facebook Live. So I'm doing it a little different, guys. Let me take my glasses off. I can see better. There we go. We're doing it a little different, so we're here outside of the reception, and I didn't do it yesterday, but I want to do it today. So I know I'm cut off, but that's how Steve set my phone up, but that's okay. It's her. It's all about her. It ain't about Juanita. Uh -huh. So, here I am with Terry Campbell. She is the stage for Lung Cancer Survivor. Non Small Cell. Non Small Cell. I'm going to give it over to her. She's going to share her story. Um, hey, Don. I miss you, sweetheart. If, um, if you guys have any questions, just type it on the comments. We'll lean over to read them and then she'll answer it, okay? <laughs> So here is Terry, and Terry, take it away. Okay, in August of 2017, I was diagnosed with lung cancer. When um, I went to the first doctor, which was a lung cancer, well, he was a lung cancer doctor, it was a pulmonary, pulmonary, specialist. pulmonary specialist. And I was getting ready to graduate from Capella University, excited. I was getting my four-year degree, bachelor's in HR, human resources management and he kept telling me that he wasn't sure. They ran me through a bunch of tests unnecessarily, running up a bill, um, and he still would tell me he's only concerned he wasn't sure. Um, then I went and I graduated in August of 2017 from Capella in Minnesota, and I was in pain, but I got through the graduation. So we came back and we met with the, the physician assistant because the doctor was not brave enough to tell me what the test results would say. He went on vacation. Oh, it's horrible. He had his PA to call me in and to tell me that yes, I have lung cancer. And as me and my husband were sitting there, so we asked the PA um, what would they do, what would the treatment be, how or what we do, what do we need to do, where we go. And she said, the, um, there was two spots on my abdomen and that that's what they were concerned about. They were not concerned about the lung. My husband said, well, what about the spot on her lung? She said, oh, they're just freezing. And so then we told her that, well, we were going to get a second opinion. And she said, well, you could get four or five if you want. Depends on how much money you want to put in your hope. This is why I have not told my story, and I feel great because I'm with you. Yes, yes, I'm so glad. Because before I try to write my story, and I get nervous, and I don't want to relive it. But um, my CEO, her name is Jennifer Meggs, um, she was not having it. She called Chapel Hill. I tried to call, she tried to call. We finally got someone in, and I went to Chapel Hill um, Cancer Center there. And one day... One day, they told me what I had. After three months in That's our horrible. local hospital, could not tell me what I had. And, and then a bunch of tests and high price bills. And so the doctor came in and he said what I had. And he said, oh, it's treatable, curable, you'll be fine. And here I am. Amen. And then I met this beautiful lady right here. She's such an inspiration to me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but here I am. And she's here, and she's here at the Hope Summit, which now they call it, oh God, the International Lung Cancer Survivorship, Survivorship Conference. Yeah. I'm still going to call it the Hope Summit. So, um, oh, there it goes. It's right there. <laughs> so I still call it the Hope Summit. So we're here in D.C., just a bunch of us, just um, newcomers, 
uh, alumni, stage one to stage four, all walks of life. And uh, I know Terry always comments on my stuff, and she's always watching every Thursday. I was trying to do one yesterday, but it was a busy day. And so I, I convinced her earlier, and so I lost her and I found her. So we're here. And I just wanted to do something quick. I want her to share a story because everyone has a story out there to share. Um, Terry, tell me again, North Carolina? North Carolina. She's from North Carolina. So anyone out there from North Carolina uh, that was just diagnosed with lung cancer, or if you know someone and you know you need to talk to someone or you need some guidance, Terry's from North Carolina. I mean, we're all here for you. But, you know, sometimes people feel a little more comfortable talking to someone that's nearby or close to home. Yeah. Terry's here, so reach out to her on Facebook. I did tag her. Um, if anyone out there has any questions, um, let us know. Um, I can't see how many is watching because I'm blind. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's... So, you... What's your survivorship? How many years, Terry? Be almost two years in November. So, it's two years in November. So, for all of you guys out there that just got diagnosed and you're not sure, look at Terry. She's here having a blast, having I a good say, time. I look at God. Yeah, that's that too. That's too. I say, look at God. That's right. Because God got her here. Got to yes. do it, you know. Uh, you got to have that faith. I know I'm a woman of faith. She's a woman of faith. Yes. Um, so, like they say, as small as a mustard seed, yes. that can move mountains. Always remember that, guys. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Someone yeah. says. Hi, Juanita. You look stunning. Oh, thank you, Tony. Hey, girl. Diva. Diva. Hey. I, I, I just gave myself a new name, Hollywood Grandma. That, that's suitable for me. Hollywood and Grandma, my she baby. Oh, here comes Hubby. Hi, Hubby. Hello. Hello. Oh, you want to jump in? If you want me to. Oh, sure. We'll oh, jump in right you? now. I we could even have caregiver, her husband, oh, Jimmy, jump in. Oh, no. He walked away from me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So anyways, um, so what gave you hope then and what con can continues to give you hope? Share with, with the audience. Uh, when I first came to last year to the Hope Summit, um, my doctor had said remain normal. And I was like, normal, remain normal. What do you mean remain normal? Right. You just told me I have cancer. And we came and we were like little mice here mm -hmm. last year. Um, we kind of stayed to yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And then just to see and to hear the stories from other people, the people that have lived, survived, and learning to live with cancer, and just saying normal. It's a new normal. Exactly. But just learning to live with. Right. Because I did tell my doctor I didn't have cancer, but she could treat me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that attitude. I love it. Yeah. And that's how the rest of you guys out there got to be. Okay, someone hold on. I can't say I got to put my gun. Bill and I love you. I love you too, Renee. And then Roz, you look fabulous. Missing all of you. Thank you, Roz. We miss you too. Okay. So thank you, guys. Yeah, a lot of them that are watching didn't make it. Yeah. Like Don, that's out in California, and Ross and stuff. So, you know, there's always next year. I always look forward to next year because uh, we're not going nowhere. And so that's why we do what we do. We do. I do a lot of advocacy. And, um, and I'm here at, at the, I come to the Hope Summit every year and I do other stuff because I want my brothers and sisters to live longer. And we, I, wanna, I want us to be the oldest living group on the planet. Yes. Um, I want to be old in the 90s, still coming to the Hope Summit with my cane and with my great-grandchildren, you know, and I want to leave a legacy and, and I want my kids and my grandchildren to say, you know, my grandma was a part of that, my mom was a part of that, and I don't do it for me. Um, I do it for everyone else because that's that's the heart that I have. When, you know, when I the newcomers, a lot of them look so nervous, and I just went up to them, you know, and they probably thought I was crazy, and, and welcomed them and hugged them and told them everything's gonna be okay. I've been in your shoes, uh, and that's what it's all about. We're a family here, so um, thank you, Terry, so much for your story. I appreciate it, yeah. and then I'm gonna Thank have you. Melissa wants to jump in. I interview okay. her a few. Was it a few weeks ago? We had technical difficulties. Yeah, we did. But she's here, and she's gonna jump right in, and she's gonna talk. What do you want me? Bye. You can tell me. Oh, she's leaving. <laughs> you can sit right oh, here. Cause there's no room. It's okay. <laughs> Guys, Hi. remember Melissa. Oh, you can see me now. Yes, we had yes. technical difficulties yeah, a couple it, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, but it was it was still great. Let me see. Hold on. Don said, "Oh God, I can't read Don. I'm, I am planning on it." First one I missed since 2013. Yes, uh, I'll see you. Yeah, and I'll see you. Yes, I'm. I'm going. I'm going to make it to Sacramento, Don. I'm going to make it. I did rent um, a Motel Six. I don't need nothing fancy. Not too far from you, so I did rent it. 
uh, for the weekend. Steve is here. I'm hoping that Steve could go. I'm pretty sure he's going to come. And, um, and I'll see you next year. Here's Steve. Hey, Dan. And so, Dan, I'll be there to celebrate your 10 years. I promise. I'm going to do everything I can. Because I got a big trip coming, but I ain't going to say it. Facebook Live, because, you know, I got a lot of haters out there. <laughs> Uh, so, I don't believe you have any haters. No, you just don't Don, know. I'm not going to be able to make your party, no, unfortunately, right, yeah. but yeah. my heart will be with you. <laughs> I hope you're feeling better. Yes. Yes. I hope you're feeling better. I'm, we miss you here. Yeah, I miss you. And I'm praying for you, Don. You know, I, I, I pray. I'm always praying. You know how much I love God, and so I'm praying for you. And I, and I truly believe in my heart that when I pray, that God answers my prayers. So I'm praying for you and for everyone else out there that is, you know, going through a hard time right now. But you know what? I declare and decree in Jesus' name that you're going to be fine. And I will see you in June. I'm going to do the best I can. I've got the hotel. I just want those flights to go down so um, I could go out there and spend it with you, okay? So, guys, this is Melissa. She shared her story kind of. um, a few weeks ago. And so since I'm here, you know, if anyone wants to jump in, but they're all at the reception. And I just came out because one, I'm tired and my back hurts, and I just needed a. Well, I got a notification read. on my phone. No, did you? That you okay, were doing, yeah. But so yeah, I'm a I'm a good example of n of not giving up because I was diagnosed in 2005, and uh, my cancer metastasized, and it's been in my liver ever since. So I'm stage four patient, uh, 14 years. I'm on my sixth clinical trial, but I'm feeling pretty well and I feel very blessed to be here Amen. with all my friends. Amen, yes. <laughs> I love this woman. And I love this woman. <laughs> and we all love each other. We're yes, family yes. here. So I, I really encourage you if you're a lung cancer patient to um, apply for the travel grant next yes. year and come and join us. It is a life changing, I can't even explain it. No. You know. Well, we get at each other. Steve, um, if, if anyone wants, wants wants to come and interview, bring them. Sure, why not? We could have Andrea. Andrea is actually the, the CEO, president of Longevity. I would love to talk to her just for a little bit. But I think she's going the other way. Yeah, she's going the other way, so I don't think so. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, it's a great, I mean, I, when I, like I said before, when I met Melissa, it was here. My, the first time I came here and it was just, they welcomed me with open arms. It was my first time I was so scared and nervous. I don't know what to expect, expect, but looking at all of them and they all, you know, we all have our, our badges here and then we have these little fun things that we put. See, mine says grandma, and then mine says superstar, because we all know a superstar. And then queen bee, uh, we won't go there with that one. And then trouble. And Steve has grandpa and, uh, dub, what was it? Oh, troublemaker. And then Melissa has, uh, you know, official. Somebody. Somebody. Something. something, yeah. No whining. Glass half full. That's how I, I love that one. That's how I roll. And then happy to be here. And we're all happy to be here. So, mm. you know, when, um, when I first came and just looking at everyone's, name and what it says right here there are so many with stage four and that's and i'm stage three well i was i, I don't claim it anymore most of us say, are stage yes four. The, the majority are stage four and they gave me so much hope to see them and then and that was my first and that wasn't even a year uh of being diagnosed i was diagnosed in november 2014 and then it was april 2015 so it wasn't even a year i was a few months in and to see all of them and you know reading there oh my god stage four oh my god and, and the the year they were diagnosed that gave me so much hope, and that's why I fell in love with longevity. And, and here, you know, they they educate you, and, and, and they teach, and we're all a family. And even though we live in different parts, but we communicate through text, messenger, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we stay connected. Yes. And then we get to see each other yes. here. This is the sixth year for me. Oh, that's here. awesome. Yeah. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, and you know, and I love to come every year. And I'm glad that my husband comes. And you know, I want to bring my my kids so they could see this as well. And it's, it's kind of hard when you have a big family. And you yeah. know, yeah, my daughter came with me a couple oh, years ago. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's but nice. yeah, and so like I said, you know, if anyone has any questions for Melissa, um, feel free to um, ask. I'm trying to think what else. Got. I'm trying to see if there's any more survivors I could bring nobody. them over here. I know. Well, I came kind of far away because Steve said it was going to be too noisy over there. But, um, but um, 
Oh, here comes Come on. Oh, oh Greta. Greta. Here comes Greta. <laughs> I haven't Greta, seen her yet. Yes. Come here, girlfriend. Yes. I will let Greta have my seat. No, 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 no. No, come on. We're we're doing face. I do Facebook live interviews. I don't know how to do that. You I just so, talk. Yeah, you just talk. Share your story. I know. Well, I can talk, but I can't. Yeah. Here, I don't I'll know get out. Yeah, so I want to hug you first. Yeah. So yeah. they're gonna hug. Guys, I'm gonna introduce you to Greta. She used to work for Channel 7 News here in the DC area. She is a lung cancer survivor. We're busy hugging. She is a huge we're busy advocate. Hugging. We're busy hugging each other. This is Greta. She is an amazing woman. Right. I met her also the first time I came. And I only sit next to amazing women. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and this, she inspired me. I, I, she's got to tell you, tell you guys her story. But she's famous too, guys. She worked for Channel Seven News. Woohoo! That's yeah. my favorite I new was station. A diva. I was a diva. Once Ooh, a time. That's right. See, no, you're still a diva, girl. Okay, what are you talking? Right. She's still a diva, right? <laughs> Right, audience? Tell her she's a diva. I keep telling my kids I'm a diva. Yeah, no, she anyway. is a diva. So I'm going to let Greta introduce, well, I already introduced her, share her story, the wonderful advocacy work that she does for lung cancer. We, we need the funding because I want us all to live longer. I want to grow right. old with my husband and meet great-grandchildren. So guys, here's Greta. So Greta, take it away. Share oh, your wow. story. Okay, yes. we'll it. It's all you, girlfriend. It's all about so you. So I'll try to make it quick. That's we okay, don't go right ahead. Whatever, you know, it's Night is moving on. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so um, uh, I was a never smoker. I grew up. Well, I grew up in upstate New York, but um, have been in the Washington D.C. area for the last 30 years. And in TV news, and was a runner. And in 2012, I went in for a physical, just a regular physical. Mm -hmm. There was no problem. And my doctor called and said, uh, "There's something." Well, they did a chest X-ray. Mm -hmm. And he said, it was a new doctor, and he said, you know, something abnormal on the chest x-ray, you need to come in for a CT scan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wasn't sick, you know, I was feeling fine. Right. So I went in, and uh, it, was, it showed a tumor on my lower left lobe, my left lobe. And I was on a story, actually, when the, when the news came out. I was, out of, I was lead story at 6 o'clock for 6 o'clock news for ABC7 here in Washington, D.C., and... I got the call from my doctor when I was sitting on the curb at McDonald's when my photographer was editing the piece and I sat down and the call came in and he goes, uh, Greta, sorry to tell you this, but you have lung cancer. And I was sitting on the drive through oh. curb and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I had to go out and go live on TV mm -hmm. right after that. But anyway, so I was stage one. They did a little back to me. They removed the, the lower left lobe. I was fine. They staged it actually 1B. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Despite my assumption I was going to have some kind of chemo or something, I had three consults and they all said you one B. The tumor had invaded the pleura, the lining of the lung. So I put it in a gray area for follow-up treatment, but they said no, no, nothing, just monitor it with scan. So I did so for about a year and a half. Everything was fine. Back to work. Did a series on myself, you know, trying to be a diva. That's right. Anyway, um, about a year and a half later, I did start to become symptomatic. I am. I had a cough that wouldn't quit, and I had breathing, shortness of breath when I was climbing stairs and so forth. And that's when they diagnosed me. Well, they, uh, there was a tumor, there was cancer in there. And um, so they gave me chemo to try to shrink everything mm -hmm. in preparation for surgery. They were going to try to remove the tumor mm -hmm. um, and save that lung. It was on the left side again. And then when I had surgery at Hopkins. And when they went in, they found that it had spread to the lining of the, the pleura, the lining of the lung, all these little dots and everything. He, he biopsied them on the spot. And all the so he just sewed me up and said, this is your stage four. And it's pointless to remove the lung at this point and do anything. So that was a real jolt. That was a life changer for me. And that began a series of, that. so that was in 2014. And after that, I, uh, well, everybody thought I was going to die. Um, so that was a tough time, okay. and I have, I, I have two kids, and one was in high school, and one was in, just out of college, I guess, I can't remember now, but that was really, really tough as a single mom. Anyhow, um, so I underwent uh, chemo for two years, and then I was NED, I, was, I had a 100% response, everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So I went on a limp to maintenance um, within that time frame. Everything was NED, and then uh, in January of 2016, I said, you know, I need to take a little break. You know, I'm fine. Everything's good. I'll take a little mm -hmm. break. 
so I took a break for two and a half years. <laughs> I never went back. I went AWOL. And I was fine. I forgot I had cancer. It was great. I was living life. Um, and uh, But when I had that recurrence, I ended up retiring. Work, work as a reporter in yeah. television. When you're out in the, the snow and the sleet and everything yeah. else for all hours of the night and day, it can be really difficult. Yes. I and, agree. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, one of the, when I went back to work, one of the first things I had I covered was breaking news. It was a house fire mm. and smoke, oh, and I'm out in the street, and this billowing black oh, smoke, and yeah. I'm running down the street with the microphone oh, no. and hacking away. And I, mm -mm. I I escaped into some neighbor's house. I'm banging on the door, and I said, you know, I'm pretty crucial. I said, I really need to get in this house. I don't think I should be out in the smoke. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I ended up retiring, and all was fine until um, twenty. So that was my first. Oh, uh, last year. What? What is 2019 now? So it was about yeah. a year ago, around okay, Christmas, yeah. Christmas of Christmas of 2018. No, 2017. 2017. Yeah. Oh, the years go by when you're having fun, right? I know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I began to be symptomatic again. I had a wheeze and a shortness of breath, and I knew. And my scans had been clean, which is a reminder, guys. If your scans are clean. That doesn't necessarily mean right. you're cancer free. If you're symptomatic, you need to get a bronchoscopy done. There are other ways to detect. And sure enough, my both of my reoccurrences, my scans were clean, but when they did the bronchoscopy, they found the cancer. Oh wow! So the second time, I learned and I said, I want a bronchoscopy. Mm -hmm. Your scans are clean. I want a bronchoscopy because I know it's back. And sure enough, it was back. So now, this past year, I've been on multiple uh, treatments. I did uh, the trifecta, the immunotherapy, but I had a very low pdl one uh, it was only 5%, mm -hmm. and I don't know how important that is anymore, but I don't think I had a very good response to that. So we did that for a few months, and then I had some radiation for a hot spot in the back, and then since January, I have been on targeted therapy. I have a BRAF mutation, and the FDA in 2017 approved a two-drug combo that was used for melanoma patients, and they approved it in 2017 for lung cancer patients. Awesome. So I was able to take advantage to take of that, yes, yes. and that gave me another tool in my toolbox. So since awesome. January, I've been on that, and um, I'm going to be getting scans coming up here. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Awesome. Um, we'll see what happens. Yes. So that uh, that's why it is so important, yeah. guys, to donate. Yeah, you know, some people are like, oh, with these cancer, it's scam. Ours is not a scam. Longevity oh my gosh, no, no. is not a scam. It's the biggest um, yes. nonprofit. Yes, it is fundraiser for cancer or yes, lung cancer is. research in the country. And um, Andrea Ferris, the, the founder and CEO, mm -hmm. was saying last night at the gala that only uh, what was it, six percent of cancer research monies goes to lung cancer research. I thought it was seven. Six, seven percent. It was wrong there. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. It's, it's bad. really bad. It's it the is. number one cancer killer yes. and it only gets six percent And we, of the we don't get nothing. We're in yeah. the bottom of the yeah. totem pole. And every time I do these interviews, you guys hear me. We're in the bottom of the totem pole. We need to bring those numbers up. Yeah. I met the five year. When I first was diagnosed, mine said 10 years, 10, um, 10 percent, I'm sorry, five year survival rate. But I spoke those words into existence. I'm going to see it. This November is my five years. Woo! Yes. And we'll be back here in five more. Exactly. Years. I'm going to be, and so that's why important. I want this beautiful lady next to me to have more years. Yeah. So, guys, when when we're on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever you guys do, I'm a Facebook person, and you see me, you know, donate to Longevity, or I don't care who you donate to, Lung Cancer Foundation of America, yeah. somebody. Yes. Yeah, somebody. That money, I promise you, it goes for research. We matter too. And you know, it's not about the stigma. Stop with the stigma. You don't have to smoke to get lung cancer, as no. long as you have lungs. Right, right. Last night I was at the gala. I was I was so blessed. And, and so thankful to Andrea and Longevity to invite Steve and I to the gala. And I was hot, guys. I looked like a diva. My yeah, you did. Yeah. You were the diva. I, I still am not a diva. But anyway, you, <laughs> you are. You are girl. a diva. <laughs> and they showed the video that they did that I did for, for them for Biomarker, uh, the campaign. And, you know, you guys know me. I'll be like, yeah, that was me. Who? Yeah, I'm traumatic. But you know what? It made me so humble that I was trying not to cry because I don't have waterproof mascara. And I kept fanning my eyes because it just yeah. made me so humble that they show my video and the hope that I give people. And that's why I do what I do. But she went on stage and we raised money for research. $100,000. 100, 
hundred thousand yes. dollars in the live auction. Yes, we did a at live least. auction. At least. And we did a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm a lung cancer survivor and Steve donated. My husband, I mean we can't donate ten grand, five grand, but what we can and he and he sees every, every you know, he sees counts. the faces. He knows how important this is, he knows how much I love my family because they understand me, I understand them. And that that's part of it. It's not just a disease, it's a person that you think of. Yes. Like you think of it Juanita or somebody that you know and you know, I've I've said this before, and it's changing. Yes, it is. But but before, historically, you know, in the obituaries they would say so and so died of cancer, and they purposely wouldn't say lung cancer because right. they were afraid to. They yes. didn't want the stigma. Yes. Um, now that's changing, thank goodness. But um, there are people here at the, the Lung Cancer Summit who are back in combat mode, as we say, and they have run out of options. They have used all the tools in their toolbox, and they are desperately holding on in hopes that researchers and scientists will come out and yes. launch yet another yes. treatment that they can use to to keep going, to buy more time. It really is a, a hard situation to be in. It is. It so is. Um, we really need all your help and your prayers and yes. your support and just the awareness is important. Exactly. Too. Yes, um, it is. I think talking about it is important. Mm -hmm. People do, like breast cancer, everybody talks about breast cancer, but lung cancer people don't talk about it. Yeah. And it affects a lot more people. Yes, it does. So anyway. And that's why we're here. That's, that's why I here. do my Facebook Live interviews, because everyone has an amazing story. And she does a lot, you know, to raise awareness and for research. So, guys, please, you know, even if it's $5, trust me, that $5 will help somebody out there that their options has run out. Um, and, you know, and every year I do my Zoomathon for lung cancer. You know, if you can't go, just I'll ask this $15 donation, trust me. Longevity is so grateful for your fifteen dollars, and I do it because I want them to live longer, you know. And that's why I'm still. I think that's why God still has me here because I'm doing His purpose, His gift. I have a gift, and it's it's this. And while I'm still on this earth, I'm gonna do while she's everything still raising that I can. money. She'll still be around. That's right. You that's stop right. Raising money, you're <laughs> that's right. I'm still gonna be. I ain't going nowhere. I got more grandbabies, man. I'm a grandma. I got more grandbabies. Oh, right here. Look at that. Oh Grandma. wow, that's great. That's the first thing that's on I put there. Yeah. I gotta I gotta see Leanna grow up. Well I gotta go. Okay, well thank you so much. Anyway, thank you all. Thank you guys for I had tuning a time in. in advance yes, thank you so much you can grab for tuning them. in. There's a, a janitor down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're done. Thank you guys. Love you. God bless Bye. you. God bless. Thank Remember, you. help us bring awareness. Yeah. Donate whatever you can. Five dollars, ten dollars, it means the world a million to us. Dollars will take yeah, it. yeah. If you win the lotto, you could donate a million dollars. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. God bless and thank you. Thank you, sweetheart, thank you, so Daddy. much. I, I love you too, honey. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. right, guys.